Hey everyone, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to pay homage to four of my favorite YouTubers, and they are Mr. Nightmare, Rainbot Horror, Top 5 Unknowns, and Dark 5. We're going to look at four oddly legitimized paranormal phenomena. Number four, Stambovsky versus Ackley. This court case, often taught in U.S. law school classes and printed in property law textbooks, centers around Helen Ackley and her family who reported the existence of numerous poltergeists in their New York home. She reported the events to Reader's Digest and a local paper on three occasions. One particular thing these ghosts would do is shake her bed to wake her each morning. She says she would proclaim loudly that she wanted to sleep in the next morning and the ghost would abide and the bed wouldn't shake. Eventually, Ackley wanted to sell the home, but neither her nor her real estate broker revealed the haunting to potential buyer Jeffrey Stambovsky before he decided to put a down payment of $32,500 towards the purchase of the home. Stambovsky also had not heard of the haunting through Reader's Digest or the newspaper articles. When Stambovsky learned of the ghosts reportedly inhabiting the house, he immediately filed an action to cancel the contract and sought damages for fraudulent misrepresentation by Ackley and the real estate broker. Since he didn't attend the closing, he essentially forfeited his down payment. Three of five justices famously ruled that having reported the ghost's presence in a national publication and the local press, Ackley legally could not deny the ghost's existence which makes the house legally haunted. Despite this, the court further stated that the realtor was under no duty to disclose the haunting to potential buyers, meaning no damages were available to Stambovsky. Stambovsky appealed though, and the appellate court ruled that since no home inspector could be held responsible to say the house was definitely haunted, it is unfair for the seller to take advantage of the buyer's ignorance on the matter and leave the buyer with the consequences resulting from the sale. As a result of this case, realtors in New York must now disclose if a property is reported to be haunted. Number three, psychic detectives. There have been over 80 cases that have been resolved after police, having exhausted all of their options, turn to self-proclaimed psychic detectives for their help in the case. Psychic detectives usually arrive at a crime scene or an area where the victim or suspect was last seen. From there, they will see visions or sense details about the crime. Some claim to feel the pain endured by the victim, smell things that the victim smelled, or have flashes of signs and landmarks nearby where the victim was abandoned or buried. They will then attempt to lead the police to where they believe the victim's body or crucial evidence in the case may be located, sometimes with incredibly helpful results. Here are some quotes from law enforcement and police detectives who have used psychics in their investigation. I accept the psychic's role in helping with murder cases, and I will call them again because they get results. I'm now a great believer in psychics helping the police. Sheriff Bill Hassenauer from Oneida County Sheriff's Office. Psychic detective Noreen Reiner helped to locate a plane containing the body of a relative of an FBI agent, Robert Ressler, ex-FBI. If it wasn't for Nancy Weber, the forensic psychic, in this case we would not have gotten the kidnapped children back. Her insight, her help, we could not have done it without her. Detective Lou Masterbone from Morris County Sheriff's Office. I've never used a psychic before, until this case. The information she gave us was pinpoint accuracy. A psychic gives us insights that we don't have. Detective Landon Rankin of Pinal Sheriff's Office. Number two, alien implants. Dr. Roger Lair, successful podiatrist in California, always had an interest in UFOs, but felt abduction stories were too fantastic to believe. One day, a patient of his complained of pain and informed him of their abduction experience and their belief the pain was being caused by an alien implant. Skeptical, Roger assembled a small team of doctors to assist him in finding and surprisingly removing the object. 
the patient was relieved and Roger was determined to continue his research into this phenomenon. As he performed more operations, a total of 17, and garnered some media attention for his work, he found some commonalities between the so-called implants. Usually the objects are metallic, some actually emit radio frequency waves. Many are attached to nerve endings within the body, which cause the patients to cry out in pain when removed, even though the patient was under anesthesia. Lair has found that sometimes there is a scar in the external part of the body where the implant is located, but often there isn't. While inside the body, the implants are often wrapped in a protective membrane. Some of the objects were unable to be cut, even with diamond tools. The object produced no type of inflammation in the surrounding area of the patient, which is unheard of for foreign objects found in the body. The implant sites are also found to have a strange invisible dye in the vicinity that can only be seen under ultraviolet light. Number one. The Phoenix Lights. On the night of March 13, 1997, thousands of people in Phoenix, Arizona and surrounding cities witnessed nine lights in the sky that appeared in a V pattern and remained frozen in place for about 10 minutes before disappearing. The local news even picked up on the story and aired footage of the lights that evening. Many called in to report seeing a V-shaped craft slowly fly over their house before the nine lights had appeared for everyone to see. The governor of Arizona, Fife Symington, held a press conference the next day, which turned out to be a mockery of UFO enthusiasts. One of Symington's aides walked on stage in an alien costume while the governor welcomed the new visitors to Earth. The US Air Force explained the event as slow falling, long burning, Lu-2B illumination flares dropped by a flight of four A-10 Warthog aircraft on a training exercise at the Barry Goldwater Range at Luke Air Force Base. They said the flares appeared to hover due to rising heat from the burning flares creating a balloon effect on their parachutes, which slowed their descent. The lights then appeared to wink out because they fell behind a mountain range to the southwest of Phoenix. The problem with this explanation is that flares suspended by a parachute should have had some visible smoke trails. They should have flickered frantically, and these lights didn't. And most certainly, they should not have been able to keep such perfect formation since they normally drift haphazardly to the ground. The lights were not observed to be lowering behind the mountain range either. They just suddenly disappeared. To add to the bizarreness of the incident, Ten years after the event, the former governor appeared to have drastically changed his stance on the lights when he was interviewed by a local Arizona newspaper. He said he had witnessed one of the crafts of unknown origin during the 1997 event, although he did not go public with that information at the time. I'm a pilot, and I know just about every machine that flies. It was bigger than anything that I had ever seen. It remains a great mystery. Other people saw it responsible people. I don't know why people would ridicule it. It was enormous and inexplicable. Who knows where it came from? A lot of people saw it and I saw it too. It was dramatic. And it couldn't have been flares because it was too symmetrical. It had a geometric outline, a constant shape. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, even though it's a little offbeat from my normal stuff. And maybe I'll do this again sometime. Let me know in the comments if you have anything to add to these events, or if you know of another example of paranormal phenomenon that has been legitimized in some way.